Well, hello there, friends. So today what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be making a new seat cover to replace this really bad fitting aftermarket seat cover that my customer brought to me. Uh, he tried to install it himself, bought something online. Well, what do you do? That's what everybody does, right? Buy something online. So he bought the seat cover online from a famous, reputable manufacturer, probably famous name brand everybody's heard of. But he tried to install the seat cover himself and discovered that it wasn't fitting and he was blaming himself for it. Thought he wasn't doing it the right job or doing it right. So I looked it over and told him that this was never ever going to fit because of the way it was patterned. So what I'm going to be doing is redoing this for him. We're going to have a happy customer, right? So let's go. So this is the material here that he chose. He chose Paloma Red. Look at that. Pretty much red. Right from the very beginning, I am going to be showing you technique number 496. What that is, is on truck seats, truck bench seats. Okay. It's very common that because um, the width of the material here is 54 inches. Okay, what I do is I go across, uh, or uh, the seat would be going up the roll this way. Okay, so which means that I'll use this here as the divider. Say this upper portion right here would be the backrest, and this lower portion here would be the bottom cushion. So what I do is I go this way. And I'm going to be showing you how I mark my pleats. So what I really mean by that is the width of the backrest is 64 inches with all the pleats. Okay, so the roll is only 54 inches. So if, if I was going this direction, this is the top of the seat backrest, and this here's the bottom of the seat. The 54 inches is not wide enough. That's why I have to go down the roll this way. Well, here's another one that coming fast. Technique number 32 is to make sure that your material is square before you start marking it and before you start cutting. You can see here whoever cut it at the supplier, they put it on the cutting table, but they cut it crooked. You can't rely on their cut. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to take a square like I have here. And we are going to make sure that we have a nice straight edge there because anything that you draw on it, any pleats or anything, uh, just imagine if I didn't do that, if I left that, oh, it's about a good three quarters of an inch, almost an inch there at the end, all my pleats would have been crooked. They would have been um, hanging out to the side a little bit. So I think you're beginning to see what I'm doing here. The narrow part here is going to be the bottom cushion. The wider part here is going to be the backrest. So what he wants is three inch pleats all the way across. So I think what I am going to do is find the center of our material here. So now for technique number 622. Here okay, with that is is we want to achieve three inch pleats all the way across the, the the seat so what I'm going to be using is this half inch scrim okay the thing about the half inch scrim is everywhere I sew a pleat it's going to crush it down like that okay so there's going to be um, like a little vet a deep valley right 
and then a hill and a valley and a hill, a valley and a hill. Okay, so that means that there's going to be some shrinkage going on. So if I actually drew out my pleats at three inches, my pleats, finished pleats, might end up being about two and a half inches. So then our three inch idea just like goes away, right? So what I'm going to be doing is instead of drawing a three inch pleat, I'm going to add in an extra half inch. So now I'm going to draw them out as three and a half inch pleats. So with the three and a half inch pleat after it's sewn, then it should have the appearance of three inch pleats all the way across the seat. So using my white Sharpie China marker, we're going to start drawing these out. If you really wanted to, you could sew up all these pleats with this material still in one piece. But if you don't feel like taking that on to make things a little bit easier, what I do is I will take my marker and I will mark my border right here. And what that does is that tells me that this side here is the bottom. And this side here is the backrest and this is where the two come together right here so this is the backrest the bottom cushion the seam between the two cushions would be right here because we want all the pleats to match right when we have the finished product well this is one big piece of vinyl so what I'm going to be showing you now is my technique number 75 okay and that's doing my half and half method so I'll fold it in half like this now I'll go ahead and spray my glue and then I'll lay it down and then I'll do the other half Now, to have an easier time feeding this through the sewing machine, I'm going to go ahead and cut this. I've got a whole bunch of pleats to sew up here, so I guess I'm just going to go ahead and get started.
Okay, so I marked center on both the insert and on the foam because I want to explain why I didn't run the pleats all the way out to the end here. I stopped right here because the next pleat would have been right here which looks like it should be fine but that would leave us a real narrow pleat here on the end of the seat so we'd have wide pleats here and then narrow on the end and I didn't think that that would look so good so I'd rather have a wider end here than a thin little narrow end So this is what I'm talking about. This here would have been the next pleat right there. So that would have left us with this narrow one right here. So now that we have the shape of the corner of that front of the cushion on one side, I can go ahead and flip this over. Match that up right there and draw the other side just like that. So the next piece I'm going to be cutting out is this seat here, the bottom cushion, gets a long welt that goes across this front edge like this, okay, all the way around. So that's going to be the longest piece that I'm going to be cutting here. So I've already marked it out where I'm going to cut 101 inches according to this seat. So the next piece I need to make is going to be the rear skirt right here, is the rear bottom of the seat. So I want the material to go from here well past the bottom here so that way I can hog ring it underneath. So let's just take a quick measurement. Even from that, it's showing about 7. So I'm just going to go to 9 so that way I can tuck it under. So I'm going to make a 9 inch wide strip. I'm also drawing a second line 1 inch in. And what that's going to do is I'm going to use that line as my guide when I fold it over and sew it. That way I have an edge. I guess I can demonstrate that right here. I have an edge that I'm folding over like that that I'm sewing, doing the top stitch right here. So that way that's where the hog rings are going to go.
Yep, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, time to make the piping or the beading or the welt, as some call it. Okay, now that I have the rear skirt on, and I have the welt on, or the beading, or the piping as some call it, now I'm going to go ahead and put on this, make a front skirt for it and the side skirt here. I think I'll go, I'll make this seam here, this panel here between these two end plates right here. So I'll say 45. Right there, 45. And for the width, I can feel that it's, when I put the hog ring under here, up to the top, it says nine. So I'm gonna add an inch for where the hog rings go. So 10, nine and 10. Nine and ten. Now for the side here, I'm going to go again from that just past that last pleat right there to back here is about 27 so I'll go 28 just in case I don't want to come up short so 28 and it looks like I'll just do the same 10 I'll make a blank 28 by 10 Okay, let's see if I can freehand a pattern here. So I know that that's going to go about right there. Try to get it to lay as flat as possible. Something like that. I'm going to use chalk to help me out here. So it kind of looks like that. Kind of looks like that. Okay, so now let's make an opposite for the other side. The reason I use chalk, you've probably seen this before in my other techniques. You flip it over like this. Okay, 
And there you go. That's the reason for the chalk. Okay, let's sew up the skirt now. And throw a top stitch on here. Okay, let's find our centers. So we will fold it in half. Like that. Like so. Fold it in half. Grab the closest thing you have to make a mark. That's the center right there. We'll do both sides. Right there. Do the same thing here for the skirt. Fold it in half. Mark the center. Both sides. Now we're going to line up our marks. I have this mark and I have this mark right here. I'm going to line those two up. We're going to start in the center. We're going to work our way out. to be continued. Now let's just flip it over. We'll start from the center here again and work our way out. That's what it looks like so far. Almost starting to look like a seat cover, huh? Now I'm just going to finish off these ends right here. Getting pretty close now. I'm, I'm going to do is put this uh, welt insert and I'm going to sew that into the bottom of the skirt. As you may know, that's used for the hog reels.
before I put all this together, I'm going to go ahead and isolate the seat frame from the foam using this burlap. I also have a video about putting burlap on a seat frame. You want to look that one up. So remember the two marks that I made? Okay, this is the center here for the cover. That's the center for the cushion. And we're going to start there because we want everything to line up, especially when it comes time for these pleats right here to match and line up with the backrest. So we want to make sure we have this right. Oh, what? wait, what's going on here? Is that an optical illusion or... Or what is going on? Oh, I'm getting dizzy.
Okay, so now moving on to the backrest. The process is going to be pretty much the same. So let's get to that one.
Yep, that's looking pretty good. So this one is like about a six by twenty-one. Well, I thought that now is a good chance to show the discrepancy here. So this is the before and this is the after. You see the difference? Look at that. That's how short the other one was. Okay, but we're not going to make that mistake, are we? Now it's finally time to get rid of the old one and we're going to put on the new one. Well I finally found the time to remove this old cover. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Now we'll be cleaning our China marker lines with this stuff. Well, thanks for hitting that like button, and until next time, we'll see ya.